Thank you, Jesus. I have made you so small in my eyes, O Lord, forgive. that is too hard for God to do. Your case is not hard for him. Therefore, there will be healings taking place from this habit. Open doors. New done testimonies. Whatever you have brought here as a challenge will return with you as a testimony. Be blessed of the Lord. Please, you may be seated. Help me welcome your neighbor to the left, to the right. This is the place to be. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. This is a prophetic entrance service and our new dawn banquet service. The word of God to us this month is serving God pays the most. Can somebody say that with me? God pays the most. And we're going to be starting a series of teaching that will run in all our Sunday services this month. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable. So we're looking at part 1A in this first service. We'll build up on that. 
Remember, it is our new dawn banquet service. A banquet simply means take as much as you want. <laughs> so, there is no limit here this morning. As far as your faith can, you take whatever blessing you want. New dawn, on the other hand, is simply new beginning. Opening of new chapter, new page in one's life and destiny. Please come with me to Proverbs 23, verse 18. Proverbs 23, verse 18. Until the night ends, morning does not come. So new dawn cannot come until there is an end. New beginning. New page, new chapter cannot be opened until there is an end. Proverbs 23, verse 18, please let's read together. Everyone want to go. For surely there is an end, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Every expectation, every list of desire you brought here today shall not be cut off. Amen. God will meet you at the very point of your need. Amen. But look at it. It says, for surely there is an end. There is an end. You agree with me, for you to get to chapter 2, chapter 1 must end. You can't be talking of new dawn without the end of certain things. In other words, there are things that must end in your life, in your family, your endeavors, if new dawn is your desire. Surely, simply means notwithstanding, however, come what may, nonetheless, verily, verily, certainly, most assuredly, nevertheless, there is an end. What does that mean? There is an end to sorrow. There is an end to depression. There is an end to joblessness. There is an end to marital spell. There's an end to every form of business breakdown, career breakdown. There is an end to sickness. There's an end to diabetes. There's an end to weakness of any kind. There's an end to every eye problem. There's an end. There's no problem that's designed to be everlasting. There is an end to pain. There's an end to marital spell. There's an end to delay. There's an end to disappointment. There's an end to age of success syndrome. What is it that you want to end in your life? Today will be the expiry date. Humanoid imbalance has end. Fibroid has end. Everything that is named on this earth has an end. Losses have an end. Hatred has an end. Satanic gang of forces of destruction and retardation, oppression, memory loss, whatever it is, has an end. And I want to announce to someone here today that today marks the end of every undesired thing in your life. Amen. God is going to bury poverty in your life today. That fear has an end. One of us, within the course of the week, that was last Wednesday after the service came to the office and narrated some stories to me. We actually was working in one of the establishments. She was demoted. And then given suspension not to go for any outside assignment for three years. And she showed me the letter, the instruction. I saw the letter myself. I said the reversible will be reversed. God will change the rule to favor your cause. The same cause of the week, they reverse it. Now hear me, every negative thing that followed you here today shall be reversed. Whatever chapter needs to end in your life for a new dawn to come, that chapter will end today. Oh, why am I saying this? The Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It doesn't matter the sorrow of the past, of the night. When morning comes, it comes with joy. <laughs> Psalm 30 verse 5. So I want to announce to you that this is your new morning. This is your new beginning. This is your new dawn. And joy will answer to you. In the name of Jesus. Somebody said, Pastor, I don't understand. Let's look at the case study of... Um, Joseph. Joseph, 
at 17 saw his future. How his brethren will bow down to him. As he shared his dream with them, don't share your dream with everybody, they, they rose against him. Envy moved them. The Bible said the patriarchs were moved by envy, sold Joseph into slavery, Acts 7, 9, and 10. But God was with him, and God showed him favor in the land of Egypt. So it was envy that moved them. How can you rule over us? And they sold him to slavery, but they didn't know they were paying his transport to the throne. From the pit, he went to another pit, Potiphar's house. From there to another pit, prison. But he needed to go to the final pit, which was a palace. <laughs> it's a process. There are certain things you are going through now, God may have allowed it to, it's for you to get to where you are going. So don't allow that to weigh you down. Don't allow that to depress you. Is somebody getting healed now? Somebody's emotions are being healed right now. For 13 good years, he suffered affliction. But at the age of 30, Pharaoh invited him. Do you know that his own friend that he helped forgot him for two years? He told him, when you get to Pharaoh, let Pharaoh know my situation. The man forgot for two years. How many people have you helped? They've forgotten you. But hear me, help is going to come for you. And when help will come from God to you, God will put your matter in the heart of those that matter. Yeah. Why must Pharaoh have that dream that time? Why must they look for an interpreter? It was because Joseph needed to be relocated to his new dawn. Now hear me and hear me well. Something is going to happen as I speak right now in many quarters that will make you to be relocated to your rightful place. Yeah. That will make what is due to you to come to you. The make things to begin to answer to you at their own account. Yeah. Hear me, guests of this city will open to you at their own account. Yeah. Our God specializes in doing new things. <laughs> Remember the Bible said in Genesis 1, 1 to 3, in the beginning, God created. So God is a God of new beginning. God will create a new beginning for you. Yeah. Now, you are not the first person to suffer loss. You're not the first person to suffer disappointment. You're not the first person to lose your business. God's first business, he lost it. He created heaven and earth, and the earth became void. Three of us, darkness was everywhere. But the Spirit of God was brooding upon the waters. And he saw light because he searched all things. Yet the deep things of God. He saw light and transferred to God. God spoke, let there be light. And light came, and God began to create a new world. And the world is still standing today. Now hear me. It doesn't matter how your past has been. God will give you a new beginning. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you have suffered. Maybe unrighteously, the, 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 the unrighteous people rose against you. People stronger than you. Maybe they used their connections, their occultic powers to come upon you, upon your family. And it seems that the ground is not holding. But hear me and hear me well. God is going to give you a new beginning. Yeah. God is going to give you a new beginning. Hear me, your end has not come. You are the one that has eternal life. No problem that is facing you has eternal life. You are the one that has eternal life. So you are the one that will love last. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say with me, I will love last. Remember, joy comes in the morning. This is the beginning of your joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, if you must enjoy new dawn, you must forget about the irreparable past. The past is past. When you keep looking back at the past, you'll pass away with the past. Why? God said, I will do a new thing. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. Remember ye not the former things. God says so. Any negative thing in the past, don't remember it. Forget it. If it's testimony, say, remember his benefits. But if it's negative past, forget it. It's gone. It's gone forever. In my place, they say, when you spill oil on the ground, you can't gather it again. It's gone. Forget the past. That's why God put your eyes in front so that you can keep looking ahead. Stop looking backward. If he wanted you to look backward, you put one eye at the back. The past is gone and it's gone forever. New beginning now. New beginning now. New beginning from now. Behold, see, look, observe. I will do a new thing. <laughs> they consider not the things of all their past. I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. And shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness 
and rivers in the desert. You know what that means? I will make the impossible possible in your life. With men, it may be possible, but not with God. For with God, all things. How many things? Including your own? Including your own fruitfulness? You're getting your twins? You're getting your promotion? Including that joy, replacing the heaviness and depression? Eh? Including you getting that miracle admission? Getting that job? Your children doing well? Bringing you joy? Including you enjoying sound head and mind? That at one, one church like Moses, you see, be strong and agile. Your natural force will not have it. All things are possible with him. Your own case is possible. So don't close the case with God. Hallelujah. God is visiting you this morning. In the name of Jesus. But you see, it is one thing to enjoy new dawn once in a while. But it's better to enjoy new dawn in succession. For you to enjoy new dawn in succession, you must be given to serving God. Help me tell you, about be given to serving God. Why? Serving God is called to our liberation. It's called to our liberation. For 430 years, the children of Israel were in bondage. But the day they brought to the table serving God, they were released from bondage. Say, let my people go that they will serve me. The purpose for the liberation was for them to serve God. There's a difference between going to service or going to church and serving God. Do you know the difference? There's a difference so, between going to church because somebody is going to church is I'm serving God. You are not serving God. Going to church or to service is like taking your car for maintenance where you remove all the wood oil and all that services and then you begin to perform with precision. That's why you come to church sometimes, certain things are disturbing you, just like some already has happened right now. Certain heavenly loads have been lifted from your heart. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So, you don't even know. Nobody prayed for you, but you discover when you went back home, you didn't see it again. You came for service. God service you. Serving God is much more different. Serving God is simply availing yourself, your time, your resources, your potentials, your talents, your giftings, everything you have in promoting the kingdom of God and the interest of God on the earth. That is serving God. Is somebody following me now? So you must know the world of difference between the two. So you must deploy your resources, your time, your talents. That's why Jesus must be Lord of all or Lord of nothing. You must give him all. Your time, your talent, your resources. And there are three major ways we can serve God. Three major ways. This is just as a form of introduction. There are three major ways. Number one is spiritual service. And we're going to be seeing all this spiritual service. That will be most of our focus this month. Spiritual service, it tells praying kingdom advancement prayer. In Luke chapter 2, verse 37, we saw Anna was praying and fasting. Till Jesus came, he was serving God in prayer and fasting. It involves winning souls, inviting people to church and all that. Winning souls is part of spiritual service. Then we have the physical service, which is you, which is what many of us have known. In case if you are not even there, you better do. You are not in any service you need in the church. Join one today, today, today. Don't wait. You, you, you are availing yourself to do service in the house of God, maybe in the choir, the sanctuary, protocol, whatever, security, technical, whatever you need. That physical service. And then the last one is the financial service. <laughs> that one, some people don't want to go there. So they, when you bring that one, they say, touch not my pocket, I do my money no harm. <laughs> it's part of the service. If you understand the service, nobody will encourage you to give the things you give. It's okay? That's we are paying your tithe, giving your offerings, welfare offerings, prophet offerings, all the offerings, project offerings, sacrifices with, you know, your, with your resources. All those ones are there. Some of these things you already know. You must be involved in that one. You don't do one and say, I'm going to do another one. You get involved in all. The Bible says, blessed is a man that so beside all the waters. So you, you use all of them. Because the one you are not doing is what is doing you. So you get involved in all. Say with me, I hear. So we said we are looking at serving God and interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable. Please understand that serving God is no mere religious activity. 
It's not mere religious activity or hobby. Serving God is a big time business. Can somebody say that? Serving God is a big time business. Honestly, I guarantee you, when you are serving God, no matter where you employ you, what you gain from serving God cannot be equated. What you get from wherever you are working cannot be equated with serving God. The minimum, the minimum you will get is two times whatever they pay you anywhere. I'm telling you, if you understand this, nobody will encourage you to serve God. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. One day, God did something for me. He has done many. He has done many. We can't count it. Sometimes there are some things somebody don't share because of envy. But one day, I did something for God. And he did something for me. That even all my people, all my village, they gathered to do it. They cannot do it. So will you tell me not to serve God? <laughs> I remember giving my Shiloh sacrifice. It was on a Saturday like this. Shiloh sacrifice. I didn't even give all. It was just part. But it was life-shaking. <laughs> The following Monday, a man and a wife from another church are not winners. So that was it is from Trem, the redeemed Christian, uh, the redeemed evangelical mission. They've never seen me before, but God gave them my name, and they came and brought a property to me. With cry, you know, because the man said, August, since August, God told him and gave him my name to bring it, he refused. The wife dreamed and saw the same thing and told him, he beat the wife. I didn't know he was one that told me. He beat the hell out of the wife. Don't talk something like this. <laughs> but after that, as he came with very early in the morning. They knelt down, begging that I should take it from them. You can't as give God, sir. You can't. If I need to, if it's just all my salary till I work, we can't get that kind of property. All my salary till I work, can't get it. So, it's the same. It's because people don't have the understanding. That's why they're not serving God. If you have understanding, you just go down for Jesus and serve him. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Serving God is a big time business. Luke 2.49, Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. So, serving God is a business. Jesus called it business. Romans 11 Romans 12, verse 11. He said, don't be slothful in business, but be fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. So, it's a business. Serve me is a business. May God give you understanding. Why? Serving God will make giants out of ordinary believers. Serving God will make what? Giants out of ordinary believers. Look at David. I found David my servant. I've anointed him with the holy anointing oil. The enemy will not exert upon him. The source of wickedness will not afflict him. I'll be down his soul before him. I'll place them that hurt him. And my faithfulness will be with him. That's what God told David. A small shepherd boy. Psalm 89, 20 to 24. You know what happened? You know how David killed Goliath. You know how they began to sing for David that they had killed the 10,000 Saul had killed the 1,000. You know how? In 2 Samuel 18, verse 3, the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth. For if they flee away, they will not care for us. Neither if half of us die, will they care for us. But now thou art worth 10,000 of us. Therefore now it is better to thou succor us out of the city. So in the eyes of the people, David was worth more than 10,000 people. A man. Hear me, I pray for you. As you serve God, you will not die an ordinary person. You will die as an institution. <laughs> Look at God's servant, Bishop David Oyedevo. You know his anthem. Which all of us have been by. My sister 33, seeking for the kingdom of God and the righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I don't know if you have gone to his village before. Many of us will know his village. But look at how God raised somebody from there just for serving him. Today, he's, 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 he's a well agreed part everywhere that is the richest pastor in the whole world. Look at the great things God is doing through him. Are you getting what I'm talking about? He pays to serve God. Serve me, I will serve God. So when we engage in prayers and the kingdom advancement prayers, for instance, God continues to reward us openly. In Matthew 6, 6 to 6, and then 17 to 18, it's about when you pray in the secret, God will reward you in the open. When you fast in the secret, God will reward you in the open. So God, as you serve him, will begin to give you open reward and open results. In the name of Jesus Christ. The same way also, when we engage in soul winning, 
God turns our shame and our reproach to glory in our various endeavors. Proverbs 11.30 Say, he that winner soul is what? Wise. Our Proverbs 3.35 told us that wisdom, the wise shall inherit glory, but the promotion of a fool is shame. Even when a fool is promoted, it will end in shame. But the wise will inherit glory. The opposite of shame is glory. So when you win souls, you see that winning soul is wise. So you, you will inherit glory. And when you inherit glory, shame and reproach will be far away. That's why he turned those that, those that turn many to righteousness, he makes them as stars. You are a star doctor. You are a star businessman. You are a star student. Hallelujah. God has made you stars. And at the glory of the star, you will shine in Jesus' name. Amen. Now quickly, let's look at platform for kingdom advancement still worship. What are the places or avenues available for me to serve God? Kingdom platform for kingdom advancement still worship. Remember, I told you we're going to be focusing on the spiritual aspect for now. And today we're focusing on prayer. Number one is praying for the salvation of all unsaved that come into our services. Praying for the salvation of all the unsaved that come into our services. Please make it a duty to always pray for people who are not saved when they come to church to be saved. Pray that prayer. It's part of kingdom advancement endeavor. Don't just pray for yourself what to get and what not to get. God, give me chewing gum, give me sweet, give me tongue tongue. That's the prayer of children. And when you are praying that kind of prayer, you discover you will soon be tired because you won't see what to pray again. But when you are involved in kingdom advancement prayer, you can never be tired because many, there are many needs to pray for people, especially for souls to be saved in church. Why do we need to do that? Luke 11, 21 to 22. When a strong man arm keepeth his place, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him, to overcome him and take it from him all his armor, wherein he trusted and divided the spoil. Everyone you see doing one thing or the other, that is a spirit that is holding the person in bondage. Are you getting me now? Just like some of us were before. Some people before now, by now, you see it's hanging hangover from the drink of yesterday. Something was going on until that thing was broken. And now. So let's, we now that are saved, we must pray for others too, to, for the devil's hand to be broken over their life. For every form of spirit holding them bondage to be broken over their life. So that they can receive the salvation that is of Christ Jesus. It's part of the areas we must pray. Kingdom advancement prayers we must serve. Number two, praying the way. Praying the way to and fro church for new converts and challenge winners. As people are coming to church, as they are going from church, we must pray for them, cover them. The, no mishap, no loss of any kind, no evil report. We must also pray for challenge winners. There are people who are in church, but certain things are not balanced. We need to pray for them. Instead of laughing at them or mocking them or using them as instrument of gossip, you must pray for things to change. There are people who are supposed to marry, but they are not married. You pray for them to be married. People who are supposed to have their children, they have not had their Pray for them. There are people, maybe they lost their job, and they can't even pay house rent. Instead of laughing at the person, pray for the person. Luke 15, 3 to 5, Jesus gave us a parable. So what a man having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he has found it, he laid it up upon his shoulders rejoicing. There are people who have been coming to church before. They were even zealous. But because of one thing or the other, they have backslided or they have even backslided. Pray for them. Follow them up. Let them be restored. We have had testimonies like that of people who said, I left winner before, but when I came back, God changed my story. Pray for them to be reconciled back to God. Remember, we have the duty to go to the hedges and to the highways and bring people to church. So pray for people to come in and to go. When they're going back, there'll be no evil report in Jesus' name. 
Quickly now, what do we do for our stewardship to qualify us for reward? It's not enough to serve. You must know what to do, how to serve for your rewards to come. Many are serving, they are not seeing rewards because they are not doing it how it's supposed to be. Please, I want you to pay attention to what I'll be sharing with you. This is very, very crucial. You agree with me that every country has a constitution, true of us? Can you use the constitution of Nigeria and go and rule in USA? You can't do that. Many of us who went to one kind of school or the other, at least, maybe you went to secondary school, even if you didn't go to, you went to primary school. When you register for that school, they told you the uniform to wear, three of us. I don't know about you, my own school, it was white and white. Amen. <laughs> for classes, so, but if you are, the house wear is different. Amen. That's why I was Czech. Amen. <laughs> but for going to classes, white and white. Now, after you registered, you signed it, they admitted you. Will you not come and say to them, I, I don't like this white and white, oh. All these people are doing, I don't like, I like black and black. That's what I want to wear. Will you do that? But that's what many of us are doing. You didn't save Jesus. Jesus saved you. And you agreed for him to save you. And now he brought you to his kingdom. He tells you what to do. You say, no, I can't do it, oh. I, I don't want this time. This is what I want to do. <laughs> Please get understanding. Say with me right here. So if you are in this kingdom, you must know the constitution. You must know how things are done in this kingdom. My wise grandmother says something. I will never forget that. He said, anywhere you are, be there well. If you are in church, be there well. Know how things are done so that you can profit from it. Say with me right here. Mm -hmm. So stop arguing that you want to wear another uniform. When you have already, now you carry yourself, call register. Say, I want to be part of this school. Hallelujah. So why, why, why did I give those illustrations? So they can be able to understand and comprehend the things you must do. It's, it's non-negotiable. So what are the things we must do for our still worship to qualify for the world? Number one, we must serve God righteously. We must serve God what? Again? Again? You must serve God righteously. If you want the reward to come, you must serve him acceptably. And one of the ways to make acceptable sin worship is by serving God righteously. If you are doing, living a righteous life, crooked life, and then you want God to, it won't work. It won't work. Can you imagine somebody stealing and coming to pay the tithe? All you did is you reported yourself that I stole. <laughs> eh? So, you must serve God righteously. Hebrews 12, 28. We are for we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we shall serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Godly fear. Righteousness. Second Timothy 2, 19 to 21. Remember, he said, nevertheless, which means surely, however, come what may. The foundation of God standeth sure. And God having this seed, God knoweth them that are his. So he said, therefore, anyone that nameth the name of the Lord, let him depart from iniquity. For in every great house, there are not only vessels of gold or silver, or art, but of art and wood. There are vessels for honor and vessels for dishonor. If anyone therefore purge himself, he shall be a vessel sanctified, ready for the master's use. So you are the one to make yourself usable, acceptable to God. You must give yourself as an acceptable sacrifice to God. And the only thing that will make that happen is righteousness. 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 You know, he said, many will call me that day, Lord, Lord. I will tell them, I don't know you. Depart from me, you walk out of iniquity. That will never happen to us. Amen. So please ensure you have right standing with God and you are walking righteously. That's how to serve God. Are you getting me now? How can you be serving God? You are carrying somebody in the heart. How can you be serving God? And you are gossiping. How can you be serving God? <laughs> and you, even in church, you are doing business. In church, too. Number two. We must serve God faithfully. We must serve God what? Faithfully. Faithfully. Serve me faithfully. Please come with me. Read this scripture with me. First Corinthians 4.2. 1 Corinthians 4 2. Can you read that with me? One to go. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. 
if we are still one, and all of us, we are still one of the mysteries of God. We are serving God. Serving God is kingdom still worship. Is it okay? It is, look at it. It's a moreover. It is required in still worship that a man be found faithful. So if you are not faithful, your still worship can't count. If you are not faithful in that which is another man, who will give you your own? If you are not faithful in the righteous mammon, who will give you the true riches? If you are faithful in the little, you can't get the much. This is one of the things lacking in the church today. Many people are unfaithful. You can't do business with another brother today. Bring the money together. Let it be his account you will use. Immediately the money comes. He will start telling you cock and bull story. Cockroach entered his bag. He will swear to you. But that is rubbish. As a matter of fact, I, 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 I have learned that I don't do things because of somebody, a church, church member, from experience, I don't do that. I'm, it's a very big lesson. A very, I've suffered a lot. <laughs> if it's a Muslim that will do it, and do it excellently, I will even give it to him. Don't get angry. We are the ones that are causing it. I remember when I was in Sabo, I get people, this kind of clock, uh, better watch that. I, wanted, I bought it for the church. I bought it three times. The first time I sent people to buy, they went and bought fake one. I sent people to Dubai to go and buy it. They see bought fake one, church members. Up to today, that clock is there. It was a Muslim that did it. Many of us, now listen to me, if you are not faithful, nobody will trust you. So you are, some of the things you are saying is a witch from your village. It's your faithfulness that is causing it. It's a basic thing, oh. It's a basic thing. I've told us here, if you don't, wait, listen when I teach you. Eh? I teach you life. Basic, when you talk of basics, it's like the alphabet in English language. Remember the illustration of me? He will make with the professor that he, this, 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 this alphabet. It doesn't matter how anointed you are as an English student or teacher or professor. You won't say, I will not do with the 26 alphabet. True or false? It's a basic thing. You require it. The same way, <laughs> faithfulness is a basic requirement in still worship. So if you don't have it, you are wasting your time. You better look for it. Why? The Bible told me that in Proverbs 28, verse 20, that a faithful man shall abound with blessing. A faithful man shall abound with blessing. As a man of our God, he's looking for the faithful. A faithful man who can find. Proverbs 20, verse 6. A faithful man who can find. I learned a very big lesson the year 2000. I was privileged to serve in Durham at that time, and we were about five of us serving with the bishop, and we had a management meeting. And one of the decisions, crucial decisions, sometimes it's good for you to be exposed where decisions are made so that you know how things happen. Crucial decision was to be made. Two pastors were to be posted. One of them, one was very powerful, the other one was faithful. They had all the indices, they were matching each other. But now a decision was made, somebody must go. And we couldn't find out who. And in the course of the thing, the bishop took a big, big breath, a, a breath, and then he made a statement. I don't know how many of my colleagues understood, but I took a lesson from there. He said something. Let this man go. He's a faithful man. He followed it up with that. A faithful man is more powerful than a powerful man. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't understand it. When I get back, I had to ask God. Now, this one is my own now. When I asked God, why did this man talk like this? Why? He now showed me the case of Joseph and Samson. They were faced with the same kind of problem. Is it okay? Joseph's own was even uh, worse. Samson's own was, Samson tempted himself. Joseph was tempted. Are you getting me now? But the powerful man fell. The faithful man stood. And now I agreed that a faithful man is more powerful than a powerful man. And he taught me to remain faithful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. May God give us understanding. Amen. Number three, our service must be from the heart. It must be from what? You must do it from your heart. If it's not from your heart, it doesn't produce. Why? God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. God has not changed the way he looks. God looks at the heart. First Samuel 16, 7. God looks at the heart. Men look at the outward appearance. You can be pretending to people as if you are doing something. Eye service, you know. You say, Pastor, ah, ah, ah. When he leaves, he says, mm. 
You can be doing that, but God sees your heart. He knows our reins from our Pharaoh. Jeremiah 17, verse 10. He knows our heart. So stop doing eye service. Let it be from the heart. God that marks the heart is the one that rewards. Pastor cannot reward you. Pastor Kenwa cannot reward you. Bishop Oyedebo cannot reward you. It's only God that can reward you. So please him that can reward you. Say with me, I hear. Quickly, as I begin to close now. Returns for kingdom advancement stewardship. What are the benefits? What are the advantages? What are the results? What are the dividends? What are the gains? Now hear me. Every wise investor, before investing, he, will, he finds out, he will find out certain basics about the company. One of those things you want to find out is the return on investment. You don't just invest blindly. So what are the returns on investment? In kingdom service. I told us no organization on the earth here can pay you. IMF, World Bank, UN cannot pay you as kingdom service can pay you. You know why? In kingdom service, you get paid with both what money can buy and what money cannot buy. Every organization can pay you only what money can buy. Even when they give you health insurance, if you become missing too much, they will sack you. So what are those returns? Number one, secures our present life in color. It secures our present life in color. Your present life here, you can live it in color. He said in this world, you reap a hundredfold, and in the world to come eternal life. So in this world, you can see, uh, enjoy color. Job 36, verse 11, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Hallelujah. Number two, it secures favor with God. It secures favor with God. You can have favor with God. Jesus had favor with God and with men. Luke 2, 52. So you too can have favor with God and with men. Remember Psalm 103, Psalm 102, 13. To 15, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the said time is come. For the servant takes pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear thy name, the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. And the Bible told us, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, obtain favor from the Lord. Proverbs 18, verse 22. And Psalm 13, verse 7. By his favor, my mount of my business, my career stands out. So you need that favor from God. It can come by serving God. Number three, it engenders supernatural fruitfulness. You can't serve God and not be fruitful. Fruitfulness in your mind, fruitfulness in your body, fruitfulness in your career, fruitfulness in whatever you do. All around fruitfulness. Says all those 23, 25, 26. Serve the Lord your God. He bless your water and bless your blood, and you will take away sickness from the midst of thee. You will not be barren nor cast your young. The number of your days you will fulfill. So no more barrenness of any kind. No more barrenness of ideas. Psalm 2, 1, 27, verse 3, children are the heritage of the Lord, the fruit of the womb is his own reward. God rewards us when we serve him with fruitfulness. Number four, he confers joy and rejoicing. That is what you are going with today in Jesus' name. Amen. Joy and rejoicing. Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart dwell good like medicine, and a broken spirit dry the bones. So don't tell me that you know the smile, you know the be joyful. Every time your face is like Zuma Rock, no. A merry heart do I go like mess, mess. A broken, bo broken spirit dries the bones. You are drying up because of the things you are carrying inside your heart. If you see any man, when do they laugh? Something they inside his heart, where they worry. Glory to God. The seventh day return after they went for evangelism. Now think about it. If you have ever gone out for evangelism or outreach and you win souls, don't you see how joy comes back to you? Why won't you come back? If you are part of those giving joy to heaven, why won't you have joy on the earth? Think about it. The seventh day returned, and they said, the devil will subject to us in your name. <laughs> they came back with rejoicing. Jesus said, that is not enough. The devil has already fallen on your, on your behalf. Luke 10, 17. They returned with joy. You are returning from this service with joy unspeakable. Amen. It is with joy that you gain revelation. It is with joy that you draw what out of the words of salvation. As a mother of one, Nehemiah 8, verse 10, said the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you remove of the Lord, you discover that joy is strength. So when you are missing joy, you are lacking strength. Hallelujah. I have joy, 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 joy overflow in my life. That is what you have. Joy overflow. Now hear me. For you to walk in this new dawn, you need two things. Number one, you need to be engaged in sacrifice. Psalm 50, 5 to 6. 
Gather my sins unto me, how they made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And heaven will declare his righteousness. What is the righteousness of heaven? Whatever is written is heaven's righteousness. Those who engage in sacrifice will always have new dawn. Ask Abraham when you see him. Ask David when you see him. Abraham sacrificed his only begotten son. God gave him a new page. God that said we should not swear, God began to swear. Genesis 22, 1 to 18. Because you have done this, I will bless you. In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. As you engage in the altar of sacrifice, God will open new doors for you. In the name of Jesus. Number two, you need a platform of love. You need to be a true lover of God. Why God is looking for some people, some people are looking for God. If you are a lover of God, God will begin to look for you. Ephesians 3, 17 to 19, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all sense what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ with perfect knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. When you begin to walk in the love of God, you begin to act in the fullness of God. Remember, he that dwells, walks in love, dwells in God, and God dwells in him. First John 4, 16. So when you dwell in God, God will show up. He will manifest himself in you. And God can manifest himself in you without you, you know, experiencing blessings and new dawn. However, God searches the heart. May God find your heart worthy in the name of Jesus Christ. David loved God, and God showed himself on his behalf. Today we are still celebrating David. As you love him, as you engage in the altar of sacrifice, I see God changing stories for you. So every one of us should expect the opening of new chapters as we engage in sacrificial and in love, advancing the kingdom this month. Rise on your feet. In a short while, we're going to pray. And um, before we do that, I want to give opportunity to everyone Proverbs 23, verse 26 says, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. For you to be saved, you must repent. It is a basic thing. It's a requirement. You repent. Repent means to transform, to change. Change your way of thinking. Change your way. You've been treating Jesus. Jesus must be Lord of all in your life. It's not enough to come to church. You can be in church and not in church. Jesus must be Lord of your life. He must be first. Your phone shouldn't be first. Your television shouldn't be first. Your money shouldn't be first. Your family shouldn't be first. Jesus should be first. And somebody is here today. You know you have not allowed Jesus to be the first. And you want to make him the first right now. By making him the Lord of your life. The Lord and Savior of your life. Please put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody is here also. You gave your life to Jesus someday. Yes, you did. But maybe because of pressures of life, pressures of friends, because you didn't understand, you took your life back. You can return back to him. He will return to you. Be sincere. Return to him. Or maybe you are suffering from certain evil habits and you know that only Jesus can help you. Please put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only son of God. You died. And you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Today, I make you the Lord of all, the force in my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Prince of Peace, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name.